I heard something, something I never heard before in 16 years in the mine, like rain coming off the pillars. At that moment, something just dawned on me. I started an evacuation at 6.40, everyone was accounted for, and at about 6.59 and 48 seconds, the mine collapsed. It was catastrophic. The air blast was up to 180 to 190 miles an hour coming out of the portals. We went the whole day thinking it was just the interior of the mine localized that fell. No, it was the whole mountain set down. I've got 20 guys, so I know 20 different families. We want to see everybody go home every day. So we had uh, everyone accounted for. It was pretty obvious that we'd had a massive event underground. I've got a workforce here that's looking at me for answers, and they want to know what are you doing to, to keep us working. After talking to AMSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, it was determined rather quickly that no manned explorations would be done anytime soon. We wanted to be able to use the best technology that we could find, robotics, LIDAR technology, drone technologies, to survey the mine before we ever considered putting boots on the ground. For a limestone mine to collapse like it did, when to go as violently as it did, and to create the surface subsidence, it was unprecedented. This was definitely an area that we hadn't been actively working, so we really didn't have that technical knowledge that was out there. This mine is over 100 years old. We don't have a lot of technology. We have 110 power that goes in 900 feet to the shop. After that, everything that's inside that mine is carried in the equipment. There is no internet, there is no fiber backbone. So how do we get that peak 1,800 feet in? It's a unique challenge to try to provide a communication system underground to allow that data throughput to handle the video and the LiDAR applications that were needed. Without infrastructure underground, we contacted Ragent to make sure that we could provide the on-site support and help implement the solution, get the communications from here to the portals so that the robots can go underground and do the exploration. Together, we have came up with a plan of having Australian Droid and Robot, one of our technology ecosystem partners, using Ragent Breadcrumbs, drive the infrastructure underground and stream live high-definition video and LiDAR mapping data back out of the mine. So we've got a range of different platforms that can perform these tasks of underground inspections to eliminate the human factor. We needed something we could rapidly deploy into the mine and build up the network as we go. We've had really good success with the, how robust and reliable the Nagent network is. It's been tried and tested for all our previous platforms, underground and above ground, drones and autonomous vessels as well. The first goal was to get the carts that PBE had developed with the fiber, so we could tow 500 foot of fiber into the entryway of the mine, and then that would establish our first node inside the mine. From the operations center, we'd power on each robot and drive that into the entryway of the mine. We'd then put another robot in, bring it past the trolley to the next robot, and then push that even further in. We had a total of eight robot hops and an additional two hops to get back to the operations center. We were able to still get around 80 megabits per second, 1.7 kilometers underground. The primary objectives were to visually inspect sections for damage from the air blast. We inspected a lot of machinery to gauge how far and how intense the air blast was at those sections. On top of that, we also did have the LiDAR scanning, and that was really crucial for when we actually got up to the subsidence area, and that allowed us to see about five pillars deep. The LiDAR also really helped for navigation inside the mine, because it is just pillar after pillar after pillar. It's really difficult to navigate. With the bandwidth that we are able to get inside the mine, even at the furthest extent, we are still able to pull up the live LiDAR data to be able to reference that back to a map that we had right in front of us. Through 10 hops of the robots in the deepest part of the mine that we were able to achieve, we were still driving the robots almost at real time. It was under a quarter of a second, the latency. To have that at the deepest part of my mine, to be able to still operate a robot reliably is just incredible. We were able to collect over 60 gigabytes of video footage, along with over 200 gigabytes of LiDAR data. Going back to Amshaw, going back to technical team, here's what we've seen, here's what we know about the conditions in the mine. We as a company think it is safe for us to go in and start looking and recovering the mine. 
and we got their concurrence. Without the work that we did with the robots, we would not have been able to get where we are today. We were able to form a really good visualization of, of where the collapse occurred and the safe areas that we can send manned explorations in. Ragent's technology is really key. By having a high bandwidth, high reliability mesh network, we can support the transmission of voice, video, and data. We're really excited that we could be a part of this project and help the mine. It's the mine's long-term plan to implement a mine-wide mesh network. In the future, if they were ever to have uh, an issue of instability, they could simply run a single robot into the mine using pre-existing network infrastructure. We've been able to get 1.7 kilometers underground. This is the furthest anyone's remotely gone underground in an unmanned operation. It's such a huge step forward for us as a company and proving our platforms and our capabilities through this operation.